Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast. Welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. And I'm super thankful that you took time out of your schedule to hang out with me today. So welcome. And uh, I'm excited about this topic. It's using quizzes to attract the right people into your practice. You know, quizzes are the thing, one of those things that we are, I don't know, I would say a little bit more tempted to take them, you know, especially when it can tell us some information about ourselves, right? Like what Disney character are you? Or what, you know, we've all seen them. How are you going to look in 20 years? Or what emoji are you? Or whatever it is, like these quizzes are just very fun. And the point of a quiz is to capture an email address. And so I'm giving you as, you know, a person, a business owner, as a clinician, I'm giving you the opportunity to learn more about yourself through the quiz. But in exchange, if you want the answer, you got to give me your email address back so that I then can market my services to you because I know you're interested. So you don't have to make a quiz about a Disney character. You don't have to make a quiz about, you know, what celebrity are you or how old you're going to look. You can make one that's appropriate for your niche, your market, and the people that you serve. But I love using quizzes because they do, they capitalize on that little bit of intrigue. So people are just naturally curious and they really want to know. So it can turn a quiz, can actually turn a very passive follower into an active follower just by engaging them in your world by how you structure the quiz. So, all right, enough about that. Let's get down to some brass tacks about quizzes. One of the re big reasons why they are so, so effective is that they not only generate leads, but the opt-in for quizzes is 55% over the opt-in, like in a website pop-up. You know, if you just had a pop-up on your website, that's like about 2% people will click on that pop-up to, to learn more. But if you have a quiz on your website, you'll get 55 times the number of people that will opt in and take your quiz. That means you got 55 times more emails than you would have otherwise just using something simple like a pop-up on your website. So if that's a little over your head and you're thinking pop-up, what the heck's a pop-up? I think I know what it is, but how would I even put it on my website? Don't worry about the tech part because with the quizzes, the tech is super, super, super easy. 90% of people who start a quiz will finish a quiz. 80% will give you their email address. That's the very last thing that they do before they get the results. And that's what we want is that email address. That's the kind of the coveted thing. So once they start it, we have a high percentage and a high likelihood that they'll finish and then give us their email. So how are you going to create a quiz? Okay, I told you. You don't need to know a bunch of tech. I promise you there is software that makes this super, super easy. So first of all, the first thing you want to think about is what topic would be of interest to your patients? Now you might think, oh, it's going to be something super easy. Like, you know, how to five ways to avoid hair loss. Well, okay. But that's probably not real enticing to me, especially if I don't have hair loss, right? How about if you made it something like how unhealthy are you? Like that's pretty good. Everybody wants to know that it usually a quiz topic is going to be around some kind of pain, like something they don't want to be. It's not aspirational necessarily, but it could be something they want to avoid. Like how unhealthy are you? So questions for an unhealthy quiz might be like, pick your favorite breakfast, what pick your breakfast. And then maybe you have four options, you know, oatmeal, a donut, eggs and bacon, or a smoothie. And then you have them pick. Maybe you ask them like, you know, a question about coffee, or you ask them a question about their exercise, or, you know, you ask them, one of the ones I like is I find myself actually doing these things and then ask them things like taking an escalator or going for a walk or parking five blocks away. And before I go into the mall, or you want to ask questions that kind of catch them off guard a little bit, but make sure that those questions are part of your old end goal, which is to give them a score at the end that tells them how unhealthy they are. So when you choose the topic for your quiz, you want to make, or the title topic, you want to make sure that it, it makes them lean in a little bit and go, Ooh, how unhealthy am I? Or what might I be missing with my thyroid? 
you know, find out what key, what ingredient is missing for your thyroid condition. Something like that, something that they're missing out on, or they don't know a secret, something they need to know that's going to pique their interest. The second thing is make your title pretty compelling. You don't want to have a big, long title, like learn the five ways to silence your overactive thyroid and become healthy, normal, free and lose weight. Uh, no, way, 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 way too long. Don't want that. Pick a title that's catchy and compelling and holds their attention. It should be sexy, edgy, you know, give a little bit of a, you know, a lean in is the best way I can describe it. Number three, you want to use words like really and actually. So you may want to write this down. In fact, this is probably a podcast you're going to want to listen to again because I'm dumping a lot of information on you. But you're going to want to use words like really and actually. And here's what this looks like. Let me give you an example. If I said, how much do you know about your digestive issues? That's not very compelling for a quiz title. But what if I changed it and said, how much do you actually know about your digestive issues? Or how much do you really know about what's going on with your digestive system? So really and actually imply that there's a secret behind the curtain. There's something else there that they may not know about that you're, they think, ooh, ooh, well, well, well what am I missing about my, oh, I do have digestive problems. What do I need to know? See, that's what they, they lean in and they want to take your quiz. The other thing you want to consider is keep the quizzes at like, use the three minute rule. Every quiz should be able to be completed in three minutes or the dropout rate gets really high. So it's only six questions, maybe eight questions, not very many. It's really, really simple. The next one is use GIFs or GIFs. Who knows how you say that word? Photos, videos, you want to make it interactive. If it's just a boring old quiz and it's just got a question, answer, a question, answer, nobody's going to do that. But if you make it funny, you put in some, you know, Shits Creek gifs or you've got Mr. Bean or you have somebody all amped up on coffee or looking through the alcohol, you know, section of the store when you're asking that kind of question about their health, whatever it is, just make it fun, make it fun, make it very interesting so that people really, really want to participate and give you their email because you've given them so much value during this quiz process. So quizzes convert. You have to remember that you've got to convert and the more engaging you can, I mean, you've got to make it engaging in order for it to convert well. And then we want to make sure we capture their email, right? That's the whole point. So we want to get name and email and maybe phone number. If you want, I find that people tend to be a little less likely to give their phone number. That's a little more intimate. You know, you might text them, you might be calling them, or you might give their phone number to somebody else. They don't know they are not going to be a slimy person and sell it. So I usually just say, stick with their name and their email and then you can go about getting them to interact with you further, you know, as you continue to reach out to them. And then lastly, make sure that you spend plenty of time creating those answers. So here's how you think about a quiz. If every quiz question had four choices, each one of those four choices are going to be the really bad, kind of bad, not so great and great. So for dinner, let's say they're the really bad. If you ask them, you know, what is your, what, which one of these is typical for your dinner? You would have maybe fast food. That would be the worst. And maybe you have like spaghetti and meatballs. Maybe that's the next best, the next worst one. And then maybe for your best one, you have a salad with some chicken on the top or salmon on the top, which is a good, a good meal. And then maybe for the next best one, you've got like a salad with breadsticks and uh, a grilled cheese sandwich or a grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup or something. I don't know, but you, you see how I'm, how that's graded. You go from worst all the way to the best. And each of your answers are graded worst to best. So then when you create your final results that you're going to give them, you give them the results that say, oh, you get, you know, you're in the X category or you get a grade B for your healthy diet or however you want to grade them, but you want to spend enough time on the results. So make sure that those results are good. They're tangible and you can, they, they really give value. So the person can walk away and go, oh my gosh, I am a blank kind of eater. Give it a fun name. Like you, you have fun with it. So 
Are you overwhelmed yet? Yeah, I can, I can feel it. It makes me overwhelmed too, but listen, here's the action. You ready? Here's the action step. Don't get overwhelmed. Quizzes, I'm telling you, are huge for building your practice. They are huge. So don't be overwhelmed. This is what I would say. Number one, think about your niche. Who do you serve? Okay, so just think about that for a minute. Get quiet, like think, all right, who is my ideal person that I'm serving? Number two, what kinds of things would they want to know? Or what things do they not know about their digestion or their hormones or their energy or their blood sugar or thyroid, whatever it is, whatever your niche is, what do they not know that they need to know, but they don't know to ask and you don't necessarily need to tell them, although it might be something they would want to know. Think about that. That could be the basis of a great quiz. Cause remember those two words, how much do you really know? about blank or how much do you actually know about blank insinuating that there's something missing so think about your niche think about something that they would want to know or need to know about and then what's going to help them have a better life lose weight have more money we're not in the money space but better digestion whatever it is how's it going to improve their life so if you think about like that healthy remember i said one could be like how unhealthy are you or you could even rephrase that and say, are you really as healthy as you think? Ooh, that's a good one. Are you really as healthy as you think? That might be an even better quiz title. And then ask them, choose a breakfast, ask them questions about the caffeine, you know, throw a wild one in there about, you know, exercise or like how they eat dinner. Do you eat dinner an hour before you go to sleep, two hours, three hours, or four hours? You know, questions that aren't so straight line, think of something a little different way to keep them on their toes about the quiz. Like, oh, this is really curious. Like, how, you know, what kind of alcohol? Pick your alcohol. Is it a beer, red wine, white wine, or cocktail? Like, pick your alcohol. What about, you know, ask them a question about dietary fiber, what they know or don't know, like true or false, something like that. So when you're done, then you're going to collect their name and email and then send them their results. So, don't get overwhelmed. I am going to tell you though, in the show notes, I do have a link with a, it's, I did not write this, but I found it online and I thought it was really good. There's a link to the top 10 software quiz company companies that you can choose from. Some of them are free and that'll be a great way for you to dip your toe in the water. They walk you through it. They often will have templates. So you just choose the template and you Put your information in and then you test it. Make sure that the results are working the way that you want them to. And then you can publish it and you can put it on your website. You can post it on your social media. You can send it out to your patients in an email. You can do a video about it. There's lots and lots of ways to use a quiz. You can even run ads and a social online ads or YouTube ads. I know that's getting out there. That's a little more advanced, but nonetheless, I will tell you if you can just start to wrap your brain around how you can use a quiz in your practice to generate more interest and let them know that you've got some secrets that you want to give them, but they're going to have to give you their email for it, right? We don't want to give them away. So just think about it. What would your niche want to know about? Use the words really and actually think about a title and then think about six to eight questions that you could include in there that would give you some information so that you could score them. Basically, all we really want to do at the end is just give them a score and then give them some results that say, you know, you are a picky eater or you are a hardcore eater or you are a, you know, give them some kind of a name so that when they get the results, they have that identity. They're like, oh, I'm not doing so good in the eating department. Dang, I thought I was doing better. So they... All of this can be a little bit overwhelming, but don't be overwhelmed. Just start, start simply. Who do you serve? What do they need to know? Think of your questions, like name your quiz, think of your questions, and then you can start building it out inside those quiz softwares. So check out the show notes. There is a link in the show notes that you can find that information about the top 10 best quiz softwares. And they're almost all, I think all but two of them have a free version and they have pros and cons. So the author of this particular article did a good job of breaking it down. So check that out in the show notes. All right, friend, that's it for today. Take care. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.